Good afternoon, everybody. So, um, you are in the morning half, you are in the discrete domain, but again, I am transforming you to the analog domain at high frequency. The first part you have to do is to amplify the signals, right? So, it's analog world, the signals are very weak, maybe in nanowatt, maybe in microwatt, but you have to go to the millivolt, or milliwatt, or watt regions. So, first thing is for any receiver is the amplifier. And I mentioned in the last class that why you require a very low noise and high gain amplifier at the first stage, because there is no backup for this. Whatever with the phase noise would be in the first phase, it directly adds to the overall noise figure of the system. So, with this little background, let me go to the design of the um, the, L, uh, <coughs> L, the LNA at gigahertz range. What I have said that first I will discuss about various topology and their pros and cons, because you know that you will be little bit confused about what my starting topology would be. But even if you start any topology, you need some kind of a background. Okay. So, I'll un I will introduce with all this background studies and then we will go to a concrete examples to design say the low noise amplifier for a 2.4 gig uh, Bluetooth applications, how to make an LNA for this. Okay. So, with their specification and what approach you should take in, in getting the targeted uh, specifications. So, that is pretty simple that an RF amplifier that amplifies signal received from the antenna. And you know that the antenna after receiving the signals, you need an RF filter. And that filter actually restricts only the band, bandwidth. That is, it is a <coughs> bandpass filter and it introduces the signals along with the noise. So, whatever be the antenna coming, signal is coming say at 2.4 gigahertz. So, with a bandwidth say 78 megahertz and then it passes through this bandpass filter and then goes to your low noise amplifier. So, we are here right? and this low noise amplifier, if you look at here, it sees 2.4 gigahertz with this same 78 megahertz kind of uh, bandpass and it also having all kind of noises. Already you know that it is the input signals and the input preferred noise. Now, this amplifier how it differs from the RF amplifier that also discussed in my last class that you do not talk about the sensitivity that much, you do not talk about the, uh, the dynamic range we do not talk about the uh, linearity issues, but in case of RF, those are very, very important and highly uh, you know, challenging to get all this design, all the specifications together to optimize the best performance. And what is in our pocket is that if you want to make the noise optimized, means the condition for maximum power transform and condition for minimum noise, they are not the same. So, that is in your back of your mind that you cannot achieve the highest gain and the lowest noise figure, but you, you have to always compromise in between because those conditions are not simultaneously satisfied. In the last class, we have mathematically proved that. And we are assuming that is 50 ohm is the impedance as seen from the antenna. So, your this filter this RF filter, it is not only acting as a bandpass filter, but also it is acting as a transformation of impedance from low to high or high to low. If you look from the antenna side, antenna side you are having a 50 ohm impedance. Normally, in the LNA, if you look at the common source or common gate architectures, typical impedance will be around 200 to 400 ohms. So, you need basically impedance transformations from low to high, if you look from the source side 
or high to low if you look from the antenna to the from the LNA to the antenna sides. So, this role of this one is one is as a filter and other is impedance matching network. So, both the conditions should be satisfied by this kind of a filters. If you look at the uh, standard open the any cell phone uh, kind of uh, PCB, you will find the uh, there is a huge saw filter, okay. its dimension is typically 1 centimeter into half centimeters, because you know that normally you need a very high Q, high Q means around 1200 quality factor you require for the first phase of the filters and typically the order of filter is seventh order inverse JVSF filters. So, those kind of filters if you want to actually implement using normal RLC network, then the number of components will be so much that it will be not very handy in the design. And so, now in this uh, today's technology, you, ca you are actually having those RF filters outside the RF transceivers, which is actually a saw filters. But our approach here to make these filters inside the chip. So, I will we, we, we will make it fully on chip uh, uh, kind of transceivers, where the filters, the design of the filters will be such that it can go inside the chip. And in the last class, I have not talked, but I, in your PPT, you ha I have shown you how you can make a miniaturized, okay, sensor, a miniaturized resonator based uh, filters, uh, which can actually uh, replace the bandpass filter as a, as a bandpass filter for uh, this LNA interfacing. So, coming to this, let me give that this is the, the uh, antenna, then the bandpass filter and LNA and after LNA you have a mixer and the mixer is fed with the local oscillators that is coming from a frequency synthesizer. Now, after the mixing block, you will have both the in phase and the quad phase components. You require actually both the components and sometime your LNA will be most of the time actually it will be uh, differential mode. So, actually from the antenna you need a ballon okay? the, and the ballon will provide the differential output and that differential output will fit to the filters and you are actually the differential output of will uh, from the filters will fit to the LNA. So, LNA uh, essentially you if you look at the topological selections, then probably you it will be better off if you actually select a differential low noise amplifier. Okay? But we will restrict our design examples here only on a single ended kind of things but we will show you the topology of a differential one. Next one is the LNA parameters. That has to be understood carefully that what are the parameters you, you have to chase in LNA design. First of all, it is noise figure and typically the noise figure, I will summarize the, uh, the targeted specifications for a 2.4 gig transceiver design, what will be the LNA specs. The noise figure will be around 16 dB and uh, you should start your design. What is my advice is that you start your design assuming your noise figure to reach 2 dB. Then you might be able to achieve something like 2.2, 2.5 kind of a dB. So, targeted specs little bit of overkill, but you know that parasitic error design always you will understand the models are sometime are not exact exactly uh, accurate. So, to, to, to have some tolerance, always you start your design as a 2 dB gain uh, noise figure. Then probably you can reach 2.2, 2.5 like that. Mind it, the noise figure chasing, there is an issue. If bandwidth is high, then actually noise figure will be more. Somebody talked about the wide band or ultra wide band kind of a transceiver design. In which the LNA, which is required ultra wide band then this 2 dB noise figure is, is impossible to achieve. Then you have to achieve around, maybe you target around 6 to 7 dB. So, what I am trying to say that, 
if you want to increase your bandwidth of your input signal, then you have to compromise with your noise figure. So let me start with the design, which is a narrow band, okay, say around 100 megahertz, 26 megahertz kind of bandwidth, where the noise figure is around 2 to 2.5, but our present interest we are making to. So that is the noise figure, signal to noise ratio input divided by signal to noise ratio output, and it is around 2 to 3 dB. Then the gain, and the gain actually that is the most important that the first gain is very important to actually estimate if you want, want to have the overall noise figure, then the gain of the first stage will be pretty high. So you can assume it to be around 16 to 20 dB, that is the kind of gain you should be satisfied with that. And the gain means here I am talking about S21, S21 parameters. Okay. Then you talk about the input return loss. The input return loss means that actually showcase what is the matching of the input impedance. When you lake the matching network I mentioned in this case, then the matching network is has to be matched with 50 ohm terminations, 50 ohm load, but equally it should resonate at a frequency of your uh, desired uh, RF transmission frequency. That is it should resonate at 2.4 gigahertz. So, both conditions should be satisfied. This is one and which is mainly reflected with the uh, S11 parameters. So, typically you can make S11 parameter around minus 12 to minus 14 dB. If you make it minus 16, fantastic, but minus 12 to anything less than minus 10 dB is acceptable. Okay. So, with this I say that what kind of uh, performance you should thrive on. Uh, first is the price that you need to take about the price of the LNA because if you look at the complete transceiver chip, if you cost is around 10 dollar, so LNA should not be very expensive both in terms of money and in terms of the power consumptions. So, packaging is important, number of pin counts, the performance and so on. And but the main challenge in achieving low power specifically, if you look at the power consumption of an low noise amplifier, it is typically the power dissipation is proportional to inversely proportional to the quality factor. And the gain of an amplifier is proportional to Q. So, these two particular quality uh, factor sensitive parameters you say that if you want to reduce the power consumptions, okay, then your quality factor of the overall system should be as high as possible and basically it is controlled by your matching network and that matching network comprises of those inductor and capacitors and where you are actually your hands are tight. You know that any process 180 nanometer standard CMOS process you will can achieve maximum 3 or 4 or if you go beyond say 65 nanometer at 10 gigahertz you can achieve maybe 20, 30 which uh, is achievable in today's technologies, but I talked about the cost. When you talk about the cost then you should not always try for the 65 nanometer at 10 gigahertz kind of things. So, you have to play with this vanilla process to make your design performing at a relatively lower price. So, the stringent performance requirement in digital environment, the substrate noise coupling is more critical in mixed signal design. Th what I mean by this, this is a typical case which should come late uh, at the end, but I should bring it in the first. Because I talked about SOC where you have large digital chips around. So, digital uh, when you have a very sensitive amplifier at the neighborhood of a digital block, what will happen? if there is a switching noise, then that will be coupled through the substrate and fed to your LNA input and LNA will go into the saturations. So, that is the very peculiar problem in RF design. You know that when you have a mixed signal uh, environment where you have a digital signals as well as the analog and RF, then this kind of intercoupling is very much common. So, you have to be careful by proper guard ring or by side to side um, 
keeping the digital blocks little away from that, assuming we have a design rule and so on. So that is an issue that coupling of the noise is uh, from the digital as well as from the external sources. So with this background, let us try to summarize the kind of specs what we will be achieving. So the first stage gain on the receiver is say 16 dB, uh, the receive signal is pretty weak say micro volt. The gains are usually 10 to 20 dB, I say 16 dB is a good gain guess. Then noise figure less than 3 dB, so you target 2 dB. Linearity is an issue, so it will be taken by its IIP3 or 1 dB compression points and reverse isolations means S12 should be as high as possible. Why I mentioned this required, uh, why you require this uh, S12 very high because here is the problem. Suppose the mixer having an yellow and the yellow is leaked through this mixer and then if it is finding a path to the, uh, to the from the output of the LNA to the input by a parasitic path, then there is no way to protect these signals. It will straight go to your antenna and reflect back as the radio frequency signals and which will give you the, the DC offset. So the leakage or yellow should be highly isolated from the output to the input. That means your S12 should be as high as possible. Okay. <coughs> Isolations is negative, so negative direction it should be as high as possible. So that is important one. So what I said in that, if you summarize that one in the right column, so noise we got 2 to 3 dB, gain 15 to 20 dB, IIP3 third order intercept points is 10 dB. Uh, there is a caution I say that. I always talk about the third harmonic intercept points, but second harmonic intercept point would be a prominent, would be one of the factors when you talk about the subharmonic mixing. Normally standard Gilbert kind of mixing, you do not talk about the, the second order intermodulation products, okay, make a note, but whenever you have a subharmonic kind of a mixing, that means when your local oscillator frequency and the RF frequency is not same, they are half or one third, then your second harmonic or second order intermodulation products is important. That means your IIP2 would be an important parameters in choosing the good LNA. Then input output impedance should be matched with 50 ohms. One condition is that, you, I am talking about the S11, S11 if one is matched, then you can go ideally 50 ohms, but normally my experience goes that you can go up to 47.8 or 49 or something like that. Say around minus 16 dB kind of a S11, you can achieve that kind of impedance uh, matching. And if you look at the S22 that is in the, the load side, that is the second uh, uh, S22 parameters, it, it also needs 50 ohm impedance and then you try to make that S11 and S22 symmetric. That means you might achieve a very good S11 parameter say minus 16 dB, but whereas your S22 is around minus 9 dB, it is not a very good design. So better try to make both the S11 and S22 is more or less equal, but I, you never get equal, maybe 14.5 or 16 like that, but that is fine. Then you can, that parameter will you will find your impedance is matched with 47 to 49 kind of ohms. Okay? Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to match and it is a trial and error you have to make having the terminations, the matched impedance at the input side and the output, in output sides. And next one is the reverse isolations that is your S12 which should be greater than 30 dB. I mentioned the um, 16, so you can even make it 30 dB and stability factors is as you know that it is very, very important parameters otherwise the system will go into oscillations or unstable state. So it should be greater than 1, even it can be 1000. Let me go to the first stage differential, uh, different the architecture of LNA. I have summarized in one slide. The, the flavor of designing uh, the LNA. Now, if you look at this structure, 
I have a load, do not talk about the tuned one, just a load and a common source amplifier and a source connected to that. All of you are expert in this, because this is simple a common source amplifier. But what is the new thing in RF? New thing is RF that you need a tank circuits or you need a circuits which will be tuned to a particular frequency. That is why this is called the tuning network, which will be fixed at a particular frequency of resonance. Okay? The tank circuit will define your oscillations frequency. And then this is your input, which is your RF in and connected with a 50 ohm impedance, your antenna and then it actually connected to the uh, transistors. The fed device having a parasitic capacitance gate to source capacitance and also drain to source gate to drain uh, capacitance and also drain to source capacitance. So, these node capacitance are existing and the output is also a 50 ohm terminated with a 50 ohm load. So, if you take the AC equivalent model of that, then it is simple that it is the voltage across the CGS that is VGS multiplied with the transconductance giving you the current and so on and it is actually uh, the load is parallel to the, the output impedance, the small signal output impedance RO and the gate to drain capacitance is the coupling capacitance from the gate to draw. So, if you look at that, then you will find if you calculate the input impedance, okay, then you will find that the input impedance can be calculated as 1 by S 1 plus G M Z L, which is the, the output load, okay, uh, output load uh, sorry tuning load plus C G S. So, you find that while you are actually tuning the input, we are seeing the input, input as seen by the source. That means, this is the source and this is the impedance. Then you find there are contributing factor. One is simple the C G S that will come in this node plus the, uh, the, the C G D that is coming from this capacitance okay? and both are contributing in determining the input impedance as seen from the source. So, expression of this Z in equal to 1 by S 1 plus G m into R L, which is basically the gain and uh, into C G D plus C G S. Okay? So, Miller uh, capacitance and Z out, where you will have the same thing that you will have the expressions of the C G D that, that capacitance will come with the gain G m into R 50, I am assuming the load is R 50. So, that is the gain 1 plus A v, right? you remember in your analog design. So, 1 plus A v means 1 plus G m into R 50, R 50 into C G d, C G d is there. So, again the impedance reflects from the C G d is going to define your output impedance, clear. So, how this input impedance and the output impedance are actually coming? from two parasitic capacitances. One is the C G D and other is the C G S. Okay? And uh, using the Miller effects, we are calculating very simple approximations to that. Now, this capacitive input impedance, now you assume S into 1 plus G M into R L C G S. So, this is 1 by S something C, right? That means, this component is basically a capacitance. Whatever impedance as seen by the source towards the junction of this transistor is a capacitive in nature. So, no doubt about it. What you have to do now? Then you have to negate this capacitance, because I want to have a 50 ohm impedance okay, uh, for maximum power transform. So, what we have done? We have actually put one inductor here in series and also another extra resistance 50 ohm. So, what will be this? That, that inductor will negate this impedance, the capacitance and so only it will be with a load of 50 ohm, so that the output maximum power being fed to the uh, fed to the LNA block, because of the impedance matching. And also if you look at here, uh, the 50 ohm is added to match the input source that is your 50 ohm, 
to reduce the effect of z out that is the imaginary part this is the z out uh, part the which is the imaginary part then s equal to j omega imaginary part then what on tuning the circuits the you, you can actually remember c value should be large compared to z out. So, this is very very important uh, assumptions to reduce the effect of z out again I may read to, to reduce the effect of output impedance which is capacitive in nature on the tuning circuit on tuning circuit the c value c value means this c value should be large compared to z out. So, whatever output impedance you are considering this c value should be large. So, that this one will be 1 by s c. So, inverse of that. So, the contribution of this tuning circuit over the z out gets minimized. So, if you look at that finally, your design becomes a inductor in one connected with an extra load capacitance uh, and, and uh, uh, resistance and then you have a drain to source capacitance the V out and the output impedance R 50 and this is the tank circuits. Now, come to this block first observation is that if the power suppose this is R 50 and this is also 50 ohm. So, your power gets divided okay, by 2. So, that is one disadvantage. Then the noise figure you calculated in the last class that noise figure of the system will be 1 plus gamma into alpha then R extra divided by R 50 <coughs> where gamma and alpha are g m by g t 0 and you know that gamma value we have given in the last class and alpha equal to g m by g t 0 are device parameters and the noise figure in that case you say that is greater than 1 and it can go up to 3.3 to 4 d b. Now, there is one drawback over here you have a C G D and that C G D actually provides uh, a feedback path from the output to the input. So, that is provides the uh, 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 reverse isolation gets pure that means, S 1 1 parameter will be affected by this C G D. Okay. S 1 1 is the parameters which is the which is actually the uh, the reverse is uh, S sorry S 1 2 it is not S 1 1. So, S 1 2 actually mainly affected with the C G D and C G D affects the stability due to the presence of you know that always I in the last class I mentioned that if there is a feedback path then C G D is introduced as some kind of a pole and that will actually uh, introduce the instability of the systems. So, this in overall a common source means the starting point. So, what is the take on that slide is very simple that I have a simple common source amplifier. I want to make it transform into the RF domain. What to do? That first I need a tuning load, right? With the where the tank circuit resonates at that desired frequency. First thing. Secondly, that it is a parasitic aware design. So I have CGS, I have CDG, I have so on. So my input impedance is 50 ohm. So I have to match with the termination with proper matching so that maximum power gets transferred. So, the all the capacitance gets negated by an inductor. Then I also found that in the output you have the uh, load at uh, the tank, tank would have some kind of a reflections to my output impedance to negate it. I have to have high C and also match it. So, that I will have a 50 ohm impedance. So, that is the overall scenario of a common source amplifier. So, hardly this kind of amplifier is used because these have so many advantage disadvantage you first thing your power gets divided by 2 and your S 1 1 parameters or S 1 2 parameters would not be that good and noise figure is not very good 3 to 4. So, if you look at the next one. So, which is the most popular topology is a logical sense. So, I have a tank circuit on the top on at, at a, 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 of the transistors and that is by Miller effect it is actually coming into my input input side input load. So, I have to isolate that one. So, that isolation is being made by this technique. Okay. So, you find this uh, this is 
and isolation. This transistor, this is the main transistor. So, I have not changed anything. Only thing is that just forget about LS for time being. So, this is my input signal and LG was there and then we actually this is my CGD okay, and this is the tank circuit. So, what we have done that we have make an uh, cascoded with one transistors to isolate this tank with this main uh, transistors. This gate of M 2 if you look at that the gate of M 2 is now A C ground. So, you have a D C bias. So, output cap due to Z out, output cap due to Z out okay. <coughs> C value Z out is C G D 2. So, that is the this is M 1, this is M 2 is C G 2 2 and C value is less. So, the capacitance value now it can be reduced, you need not require a very high C value because now this as isolated from the output as well as from the input sides. As impedance looking into the source of M 2, if you look at the source of M 2, this is 1 by G M 2 as a result of Miller effect gets reduced. So, if you look at that, if you G M, if you take the impedance that is which is coming, if you look at that side, if you look at that side how the Miller effect gets coming into these factors. So, look at here. Now, if you have an L G okay, and this is C G S, first this L G was there to negate the C G S. Next one is you have made this one, if you calculate the requirement of C L G to negate that C G S and also part of the C G D, then you will find your L G value is very, very high say around 10 to 12 nano Henry at 180 nanometer UMC or TSMC process. So, one of the solution that has been found that if you can degenerate it with an inductor, then this inductor would have a contributions to this input impedance matching and that will reduce the requirement of high value inductor. So, in that case may be you can have an L g which is a reasonably 2 to 3 nano Henry and this one is 1 to 2 nano Henry. Am I clear? So, if you have no degenerations just you terminate your source to the ground and L g is given to uh, negate your capacitance effects which is C g s per the Miller effect from the uh, load. Now, the requirement of L g if you calculate will be too high it will be around 10 to 12 nano Henry. Okay. This is not possible to implement in a standard CMOS circuits. Okay. Therefore, what we have to do that you play with the degeneration. We know that if you have a resistance or an inductor, it will simply affect your gain, right? it will degenerate the gain, reduce the gain, but that will eventually reduce your requirements of high valued inductor. L G. So, that is one trick I am showing. Okay. So, that is why I say that you need some time your special uh, experience in doing handling this kind of uh, this kind of problem and this gives you simple this is actually externally biased nothing to do with amplifications. This M 2 is simply an isolating uh, transistors. So, it is not going to affect your frequency response and so on only it is isolating that one. So, if you look into that way, then J D in equal to S L S plus L G. Now, how to calculate that one? Again, I say that your source is seeing the impedance from this, right? So, that will be S, then L S plus L G into plus 1 by S C G S, that is the gate to sets capacitance plus G M into C G S transconductance by C G S into L S. So, that is the contributions to that. Okay. So, that is the overall input impedance as seen from the source side. Now, if you look at that, that becomes some values like omega t into L s and then you have to understand this phenomena that in this part okay, give rise to my 
uh, imaginary part because you can expand this one s equal to j omega then little bit of manipulations will give you the two part okay one is an imaginary part a plus j b so if you look at the real part then it will have some expression and another part is an imaginary part so now you have the two equations so what i am saying that you have this expressions you have this expressions just look at this z in equal to s ls plus lg ls plus lg plus 1 by cg s uh, plus gm 1 by s cgs plus gm by cgs into ls so if you can take the uh, this expressions s equal to j omega and making some kind of a uh, manipulation then j d in can be written as some part a plus j b that is the real part and the imaginary part now this a part the real part should be equal to your 50 50 ohm impedance okay and when you try to make it in resonance then this imaginary part should be equal to 0. So, if you make that one, if you take that calculations, then you will find yeah, these two expressions that is omega square C G S equal to 1 plus L S plus C G S, where omega is the resonance frequency, because the you have made that your imaginary part should be 0 at a frequency which is at resonance frequency and also this part, the real part will be G M L S by CGS which will give you a real part which is to be 50 ohm impedance. So, GM into LS into CGS by CGS equal to 50 ohm. So, clear? So, first you find out the input impedance as seen from the source, then you manipulate it in a two uh, form, one is a real part and the imaginary part, then real part should be equal to your 50 ohm impedance and imaginary part for the resonance frequency omega it should go to uh, 0 and which will arrive into the expression of your resonance frequency which is equal to uh, this expression omega square equal to 1 by uh, L s plus L g into C g s. So, with this let us try to find how to choose the w by L and V g s. First is determine the g m and C g s value then L s and L g can be found. So, if you look at the chronology, if it is your structure, then you have to find out first the W by L, uh, to find the W L, first the G M and the C G S value. How to find? And then you find out the L S and L G and then effect of the channel resistance and the gate resistance. That means your, uh, the resistance of the channel means the, the R D S and the gate resistance R G. So, that will modify the equations, these equations, but for time being for simplicity we are not adding the, the channel resistance and the gate resistance and the fringing is, the fingering is done, you know sometime you, your LNA might uh, draw more current. So, you need more number of, uh, uh, number of uh, common gate actually you have parallel uh, combination of several such amplifier that is called the fingering. Uh, so, that W by L ratio you can manage with higher W by L ratios, but this is not coming into the picture at the moment. We are talking of a simple LNA, uh, LNA design so it's with standard uh, topology. Now, the parasitic inductor must be considered for calculating the practical component values. This is one important things that when you talk to your students, then they might get a very interesting LNA design from the library, they will say that R d equal to say from calculation of this, they will find R d equal to some value, then L d equal to say 1 to 2 nano n d capacitance is 3 to 4 pico, pico farad and so on, they calculate the W by L from the, you know W by L can be found from the, I say 1 milliwatt or 2 milliwatt of power, say I am consuming my, my LNA should consume the 2 milliwatts of power, then you can find out the W by L. Okay, 2 milliwatts of power at 1.8 volt means roughly 1 milliampere of current. So, for 1 milliampere of current, 
what will be your GM value that you can calculate. So, from there you can calculate your WIL and VGS. So, this will come from your basic equations that is in saturations IDS equal to mu n C x W by L VGS minus VTH whole square and if I give you the power dissipations will be 2 milliwatt and from there you calculate this one. So, with this you may be able to calculate all these values, but one thing is that while you are choosing those parameters you are choosing only the uh, the ideal values of that that is inductor is ideal, your capacitor is ideal, the, uh, the transistors all the parasitics are not considered well. In that case you know you have a very beautiful spectrum of that and you will achieve all this output perfect, but that is a very wrong thing. Please not do not consider any component values as ideal ok, this is a thumb rule. You should always take all the components like real. What do you mean by real? I am example I am showing like an inductor. An inductor you should not consider as 2 to 3 nano Henry inductor as it is. You consider is a 2 to 3 nano Henry with a quality factor say around uh, 3 to 4 and corresponding to what will be its resistance. That resistance will be series with the inductors. So, in this way you in a device where it is automatically it is given what will be the CGS, CDG and so on. So, all those values should be well understood that which capacitance are coming into my path and get reflexed by the Miller effects and giving me or modify the expressions of my input impedance or output impedance. So, you have to be careful. So, that is why I say that in one line you should be parasitic aware design. There is no point of any kind of a simulations where you are only considering the, the ideal components and give a very good results. So, if you look at this let me go into this the equation of choosing this output if you <coughs> now how would you this is the input side then how would you choose the, the output impedance that is q square R d equal to 50 that means if you look at R d into at basically what is R d? R d is the, the parallel resistance uh, which is coming. So, it will be R d into 1 plus q square right even q is high then you can consider it to be q square d. So, this expression r d equal to that is equal to r s into 1 plus q square. So, r d is equal to q square approximately q square into uh, <coughs> r s. So, that part the impedance yeah. So, that q square r d. So, that value of this R d means what? This resistance right. This resistance will come as parallel to that, parallel to this and uh, that should be equal to 50 ohm. You understand this? You are folding it. When, is a, when it is you are talking small signal analysis, then this is VDD right. Now, it is small signal AC means this becomes, this becomes 0. So, this is actually parallel to the load. Now, what is the series to parallel combinations? How to transform? R s R p equal to the parallel equal to R s into 1 plus q square. So, q is high. So, I am considering the series and parallel R p equal to q square into R s right. So, you have R d, R d should reflect as parallel to my load with q square into R d right. So, this q square into R d equal to 50 that is clear. Then, you stang circuits you have also assumed it should resonates at the frequency of your desire that is 2.4 giga omega 0 that is omega 0 should be equal to uh, 1 by LDC. So, you have to this is the equations to find out the R d L d and the C. Now, look at here from R d once you have found the R d because what I said that this Q what I said 3 or 4. So, suppose it is say 3, 2, 3, 3 square 9. So, R d equal to 50 by 9. So, how much it will be around 5 point something. Then you can find the value of R d. Then from R d we can find out the equivalent L d of by acetic with maximum possible quality factor. So, we can if you know this R d you can find out the L d because Q equal to omega L d by R d. Why I am saying that this R d is not the external resistance it is the series resistance of the inductor that is the coil resistance. 
So, once you know this resistance, you can calculate this L D and earlier we have to use the acetic, but I do not suggest you to go for this kind of uh, simulation tool acetic, which is always give imperfect results. Now, probably it is better to go for better I E 3 D kind of simulations tools to have much better, because we found the acetic, the whatever data of inductor it will come and actual silicon there is a 10 to 20 percent variations. So, my experience is that better avoid acetic uh, results, you go for more accurate 2 half D or 3 D kind of EM simulators which is there. But now in TSMC process, uh, there is a inductor library itself. So, you need not to actually go for all these simulations. If you calculate, if you just tell them this is my 2 to 3 nano Henry or this is the um, uh, resistance I want, then they will actually, there is a library file, they will actually calculate the number of turns and provide you all this data. So, now your life is much more simpler than our earlier days, where we have to calculate separately the value of inductor, its quality factor and the series resistance and so on, but the, now it is included in your tool. So, once you have that R D, and then you can find out the L D from this and then the calculate C from omega 0. So, you can calculate the C from this omega 0, because omega 0 is known, it is 2.4 gigahertz. So, you can find out the C and then there is a cross check. <coughs> Suppose you got some value, whether it is correct or not, then you say I said that this capacitance should be large, it is at least 10 times of the CGT. So, CGD value is available from your netlist. For a given W by L, you will find that CGD value. Suppose it is say 1.2 picofarad. Okay, I am just giving you examples, it may be femtofarad. So, but 10 times of that say 12 picofarad. So, if that 12 picofarad is coming after your all this calculation, then you are in the right directions. Am I clear? So, without turning into the uh, uh, in, in the board, I am just giving you one by one that a common source amplifier now being modified for RF amplifier, fine. I need an L G in series, but I also degenerate with an L S, why? Because my L G value will be too high. So, I need an L S in series with the source to the ground, so that my L G is now a value which is implementable, first thing. Then there is a tank circuits which is an L C R network and the output is terminated with an impedance 50 ohm, good. Then we found that how to calculate the, the W by L ratios and of the transistors, main transistors. I am not very concerned about the W by L ratio, uh, sorry the transistor design of this isolation transistors, because that will simply come from its current, because series the current will flow, whatever current will flow from M 1, it will flow through M 2, but more important is the main amplifier M 1. So, that that is the W by, first you have to find out the W by L of my main transistors. How do you do that? Now, you simply know what is the power consumption. So, in your design you have to assume that I want to consume only 1 milliot of power. Then what is the biasing? You say 1.8 volt. Then you calculate what is the uh, uh, amperage of this and from there you calculate from the e equation I do equal to mu n C ox W by L and find the W by L. So, W by L of the transistor is cut. Once the W by L is done, why I have to choose is first? Because W by L will find all those values of CGS, CGD and things. That is a ge device geometry dependence. So, once you have done this CGS, CDS and then from the net list you can find what is the value of CGS, what is the value of CDG and so on. Next is that you have to design your tank circuits. Uh, you have to design your input impedance. For the input impedance, you have to make this, this input impedance expression, then after putting that impressions, then you will find out the, uh, the, 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 the two components, one is the real component and the imaginary component. The real part should be equal to the 50 ohm, imaginary part should be 0 at the particular frequency and you have two equation and solve it for the expressions for this. Uh, L and C, that is you can find from this L G and L S from those equations. So, you from this you can calculate the L S, L G and so on. 
after that you come to design your load circuit and the load one you can do it in that way uh, just your assume quality factor and then series to parallel transformations assuming it to be 50 ohm then q square rd equal to 50 q equal to that is defined by the process you can find out rd then from rd you can find out ld and once you know ld and rd then you can find out the uh, the capacitance value and that is the acid test if the capacitance value whether it is 10 times than the CGD or not. So, that is the overall simplified way of designing an low noise amplifier, right. So, that is the <coughs> approach road in a very fast cut design. This is known as the fast cut design. You understand the first cut design means that means you have to start with some values. In RF, no design is final until and unless your simulation and post layout simulation is done. So, your first cut values, some of the values you have to start with. So, to begin to start with, you need to know what will be the W by L ratio of this, what will be the value of this, what will be the value of that. So, that one I am giving you some idea. After that, rest of the thing you have to go for simulations and going on in iterative way and then find out what will be the values coming, the S parameters and so on. Once you have done, then I am just putting in, in, in a different way, uh, this is the, the topology and just some of the values like the slides I will show you, see that the sum of the values which is given, you can go into this. Then another issue is that noise and the power. So, I am not going into the details mathematical calculations, but you know there is a noise free two port model exist for any LNA and that means suppose you have we have all designed op amp. So, how we do design how we do model an op amp? You first think this op amp is ideal and all the non reality factors are coming outside right is a two port model. Same way you can actually approach in LNA design ok. In the LNA design you can find out the uh, the total noise uh, this is not very visible, but it is visible here and I showed you that how to under earlier class I gave you the idea that how all the noises can be uh, actually estimated from each components and can be added in series by principle of superpositions and so on. So, you take that one as an exercise and find out whether the all nozzle no noise components are there and how it has to be modeled. So, if this way you can actually calculate the overall noise figure of the system. So, you remember this one 1 plus R L by R S, R G by R S plus gamma X and so on. So, this is the expressions for that, but these expressions are available in the text. So, do not worry about that, you have to use these expressions that is the first thing. So, my take from that earlier slide is this. So, I have to have a manageable equations, so that I can design a power optimized or noise optimized design. So, the noise figure neglecting the gate resistance and inductor losses without any power constraint. So, that is the thing which will be more important now. So, if you look at here, we are neglecting the gate resistance means the RG value and inductor losses that means all the inductors are ideal and without any power constraint that means whatever power it consumes, but we want to minimize the noise as much as possible. So, condition for the minimum noise figure is 1 plus 2 root 5 omega by omega 2 T is the cutoff frequency gamma delta 1 by C square where the uh, so the, where this uh, CGS that the G optimum from there he can calculate the transconductance of the optimized transistors which is alpha omega CGS delta 5 gamma 1 minus C square where omega t equal to gm by CG. So, there is one conditions that will give you that what will be the transconductance of these transistors when you have actually optimized your noise figure 
okay but if you look at the more approach so suppose there are two conditions which is called power constraints noise minimum and without power constraint noise minimum so if you look at the minimum noise you you can you consider two cases one is the minimum noise so if you look at that and forget about these expressions just going into that so this is called power optimized okay design where w optimum power is 1/3 wl cox into rs so we have said that if you want to optimum the optimize the power then you will get one expression you have to optimize the Uh, the noise or minimize the noise you will get one expressions so this is called it is called the noise uh, power optimized the power constraint noise minimum design which will give you this expressions so if you look at the bottom line it is difficult to achieve the maximum gain minimum power consumptions and minimum noise figure and good input match at the same value of the w optimum and the bias so what you have to do that you need an efficient algorithm here actually you have to play with some kind of a uh, genetic algorithm or some kind of evolutionary algorithm to find out the the best conditions in vgs and w by l to achieve this kind of uh, optimum value of the device parameters so what is the take on this i would say that that if you want to design the amplifier in terms of its minimum noise figure or the minimum power consumptions there are entirely to different conditions will come that we are accept now you can make an optimum design for optimizations what you have to do it that either you constrain your power what is constraint means i will consume maximum 1 milliwatt of power so if it is 1 milliwatt of power then after that whatever be the my configuration i would minimize my noise figure so that is called power constraint noise minimized design so that is the approach you should take and for that the expression for w is this okay i am not going into the uh, details of its expressions and where the both the w as well as the vgs is becoming an important parameters there are other lna structures you know that if you look at this uh, <coughs> this structure so that is a matching network and you have a degenerate uh, lna uh, inductor this is a com this is a so this is called common gate architectures so where you have the common gate arch architectures where but the ls where the ls uh, earlier we talked about the common source amplifier but now we are talking about the common gate uh, amplifiers and but it offers good linearity but its noise figure is not very good and this one is a complementary network when you have this both the p and n type where the but here also the noise figure is not that good so if you look for the various uh, configuration of the lna like common gate or complementary or common source the most popular design will be the common source amplifier now if you look at this actually this is the actual implementation of the amplifiers where we have taken uh, a differential amplifier uh, because it has got its intrinsic advantage uh, that is your parasitic problem and stability problem will be much less so now you can see in the design this is my lg okay and this is the ls and this is my isolating transistors and these are tank circuits uh, which is an ld with coupled with a resistance over here which is not shen so actually you are not putting a resistance you are just an inductor at the drain and and this is at the tank circuits and this is the input sides and then you this is a differential lna and then you can actually uh make it another design uh with this so for example this isolation 
uh, transistors and the common source amplifier, uh, common source uh, block that can be isolated with an inductor that I have shown that improve the stability of the systems, but not at the cost of any additional noise burden. So, suppose you have one transistor here and one the isolation transistors without this inductor, then we have found that even the noise optimized power constraint design that is considering this value, we have found that these, uh, uh, this has got this a noise figure of 1 point or 2.1 dB and uh, this values uh, stability factor is not that good. But if you have an inductor in between, then it has improved the stability factors, whereas its noise contributed the, of that is only 1.7 to 1.9. Say so, 0.2 dB variation in the noise figure, but it improved the stability factor very high. So, that is called interstage LNA design. So, that is one trick I am giving you that you can follow this inductor in between this isolation transistors and so on. So, if you look at the design, <coughs> my, uh, I will go for online teaching of this design. So, <coughs> this is an important actual design for Zigbee applications at 1 volt. So, now you understand that this is the two main amplifier differential stage and this is my the LG uh, LS and then you have a resistance over there and connected to the tail current source, which is actually controlling the overall current drawn from the bias. And then you have this uh, <coughs> the load or tank circuit over there. And then you have the transistors, isolation transistors and where we have not used at this moment any kind of the interstage uh, uh, inductor. And if you look at this, uh, this is actually an 1.8 1 1 volt uh, process, but my VDD is fixed at 1 volt. So, this is the challenge that suppose you want to scale down the voltage from 1.8 volt to 1 volt. Okay. On the other hand, you have the uh, biasing volt, you have to bias both the transistors, uh, but you have a head group problem discussed in earlier class. Then what you have done? that you have actually made one of these transistors, this is the isolation transistor, not the main transistor is a native MOS. So, VTA that is called the, 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 the threshold voltage control. So, you can actually have a low or zero VT transistors at the top of the main transistors. So, that suppose it is 0 0.08 volt. So, you can jolly well make all these transistor going into the saturations. So, that is one tricks you have understood that how to handle the scaling phenomena in case of an LNA design, where you are forced to design the LNA using an 1.8 volt process, but the maximum voltage provided to you is 1 volt. Then the, uh, <coughs> then LG and then this is the overall specification, this is for GSM phone. The supply voltage is 1 volt, bandwidth is 825 to 975 megahertz voltage gain is 16.53 dB. That is your, <coughs> uh, my target was around 16 dB. Power consumption is 4.06 milliwatt and the noise figure is 2.3. So, if you target 2 point less than 2, so you will achieve 2.327. So, that means that I showed you that various topologies like starting from the common source, then you go for how to improve that common source amplifier into consider taking into considerations various uh, challenges in it. So, what I have shown that actually a differential common source architecture would be a better choice for LNA design, where you have better stability and also the harmonic content will be less, this is one. Secondly, that you can control the, uh, the, the, the requirement of the inductors required to nullify the effect of the parasitic capacitance would be less if you have a source degenerated with an inductor. And secondly that you can improve the stability of the amplifier further if you have an interstage inductor. Inductor might cause some additional noise figure to the systems, but that is not very much. It is suppose your 2.32 dB is the without inductor, but if you add that inductor it will add 2.35 like that. But whatever stability factor you can achieve 
is much, much higher. So, so it, it, this is a very small um, discussions about that. Now, I will go for actual design of the LNA. So, we will show you the part which you are missing and you are getting little bit of impatient that uh, actual design when it will start. So, I kept it at the end. So, now I will show you how to design an LNA online. So, from my lab, the cadence tool will be done, the background simulations and one by one each steps will be explained to you, which has not been covered. Question. Yeah. Why we ignore C D S? Yes, sir. For this calculations, uh. for one eighty nanometer. One eighty or any other arts, you can say that. Depend upon which technology node. No, here you are uh, ignoring. In the starting, you have ignored this cal uh, C D S in our calculations for all the. Yeah. But we have uh, included C G D. C G D and, and C G S. C -D -S. My question is that why we have ignored the CDS, drain to source capacitance actually? Uh, drain to source capacitance, uh, so I have considered this one, right? And also this one. So that is your CDG and CD, CGS. But you are talking about this capacitance, CDS. This capacitance I have not considered for my calculations because you will find that the tank capacitance here which is come in parallel to that load which is much high. So, that parallel means this will be added with that. So, that is C D S plus the C. So, C is very, very high. So, C D S contributions is not that dominant in that way. So, that is why C D S has been, but you can consider if you want to use C D S, you can consider uh, as, if, as if it will come into your simulations. So, but for calculations, I have not considered because of the simplicity of my uh, design equations. I said that to start the design, just to have the starting parameters, if you make all those capacitance in your design into consideration, your expression will be too large. I said that then from that expression, you have to truncate the real part and the imaginary part, then make the imaginary part to 0. Then if you take CDS part, probably you will get into a second order, a means a by quadratic equa equations, then you have all those values. So, I have actually neglected that CDS to make my expressions linear and get a finite value of that. So, that is the reason I have and also there is a logic that the capacitance I have taken is quite high, which is coming parallel to that. So, contribution would be much, much less. Okay, question. Yeah. Another question is that uh, we have ignored RDS that is drain to source resistance, small signal RDS resistance is, in calculations. That is from my first cut design, again I repeat that RDS is uh, so this one will come uh, while you are calculating the noise figure, I have not neglected that part. The while noise figure because the noise figure, the thermal noise contributed by the drain to source has been cons cons considered here. Over the gain expression of the matching input impedance matching, I may not have considered to, to make simpler expressions, but for calculation of my noise figure RDS is there. So, I am not neglecting that one, because RDS would have a finite thermal noise contributing to the systems. You should not avoid RDS, but calculating this first cut design of your values, you can neglect it. That is not an issue. Question? Yeah, sir, sir, you mentioned the first band pass filter here. Which one? Band pass filter. Yeah, the first band pass filter, you mentioned that it transforms low impedance of the antenna to very high input impedance not of the Not high, line. 200 to 400 ohms. Yeah, and then in the analysis, we consider 50 ohm as an input impedance. So, can you please clarify yeah. this? And so the second is, which book uh, you are referring? Yeah. So, uh, what I said this, uh, my antenna is 50 ohm radiation resistance. So, that is coming as with the source. 
and the impedance as seen from there as a standard 180 nanometer will be 200 to 400 ohm. So, you need a match filter and the match filter you calculate that one I have used LG and LS and the top you have the tank circuits. Tank circuits would have a contribution coming as a Miller effects. Now, look at the LG it has got a resistance LS has got a resistance. I have calculated the LG and LS such that way the real part of that is matched with my 50 ohms. So, how we have done this there are two equation would come one the filter would have the uh, transfer functions one is the uh, say imaginary part and is a real part. Then the real part the same thing in the resonance at that frequency which should be imaginary part should be 0. So, you can get one conditions and the real part you make it to 50 ohm and the same way in this case what is J S into L S plus L G remember plus 1 by C G S plus some terms. So, L S by L G that is giving you the uh, contributions to negate my C G S. So, now you it is clear to you that initially when there is no L S then only L G is, is actually negating your C G S. So, requirement of your L G will be higher clear. Now, you are having a additional part L G plus L S. So, now it is shared the load is being shared. So, that is why you are having two such inductors one is source degenerated which will reduce the gain, but another L G this is one. So, you have to actually matched this is this match thing is acting as a filter as well as the impedance matching network there is a dual role in it. So, therefore, it is always better to have a Q based approach that is another technique for uh, LNA design for this matching network is called Q based matching network. So, if you have a Q based matching network this I have not shown it I have given you a very standard way a conventional way of doing things that will give you a even much better approach for termination of this clear now. Uh, these your designs include uh, biasing circuits. This design uh, no this I have not gone into the biasing. Uh, so, means noise and uh, other yeah. things. So, that is a very important things which we will simulate that one in the biasing circuit main culprit is the biasing circuit. Yeah. If you look at the current mirror then one of the transistors will actually give you the highest noise in the systems. Uh, yeah. I have made detailed calculations of the noise contributions of the biasing circuit and the main circuit for a VCO design if you find time I can show you actually the biasing circuit the mirror current mirror one one of the transistors that contributes at least 78 percent of the noise. So, that is a very important questions I think you have sir, some experience uh, in sir uh, again uh, uh, which type of biasing circuit you will suggest whether we will use the that uh, constant GM type of uh, biasing or which type of biasing you will uh, suggest here. Depend upon what is the kind of uh, tolerance you require. So, I have no such uh, I should not give you any uh, this it is the best one. Okay. So, I will give you some experience uh, yeah, yeah. uh, give you some examples of biasing yeah. circuits, yeah. but main point is that the biasing circuit should be uh, very well temperature robustness is required. Yeah and secondly is process variation. Hmm. So, which one will give you <laughs> something P tat or something is very much important right. where because you know that robustness of this LNA say minus 10 to plus 70 degree centigrade. So, biasing circuit if the current drifts that will introduce all error in it. So, your biasing circuit should be temperature stable and the process corner simulation so, that, that should be first first priority is that. Sir first one more hmm. uh, you said that key differential yeah, differential. Uh, differential LNA should be preferred. Uh, in my in I design that you know that antenna after that if you have a ballon, huh. I know that your question that huh. if you have a differential amplifier you need to design a ballon huh. and ballon design is difficult, but I tried both the case Achha. single ended and, and uh, uh, differential. Differential the implementation of ballon is difficult I agree to that because you need a uh, now simulation softwares are available in the PCB you can make your ballon right. ok using some kind of a HFSS or or and then transform into ORCAD. Once you make design then your next part will be much more easier. Right. So, either you take the trouble at the beginning and solve it or you propagate your trouble and solve it at the end. 
So, I am choosing the first part. Let me solve this problem by introducing uh, a ballon, so that differentially I can cascade to my LNA and that gives much better stability, much better harmonic content and much better noise immunity to the systems. Because my CGS are almost like distributed that way. So, I can manage my contributions. Thank sir, you. two questions. This yeah. side. Uh, sir, if I compare uh, this RF amplifier with the analog common source amplifier, yeah. then in analog common source amplifier, we add a resistor for linearity, mm -hmm. degeneration resistor. Uh, here we have not added that. So uh, You want to improve the linearity of that? Yeah, because the, the, that where, has to be the where we, you, where in you common source, in common yeah. source as source terminal, we have added the inductor no, over here. Yes, yes. Degeneration. Uh, while if we talk about the analog design, yeah. uh, we talk only about the RS. Uh, source register for degeneration. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that is one point. Then next is, uh, uh, there we discuss about the gain independent, we make the gain independent of the input uh, parameters or input voltage. Uh, here also that point I think, uh, is how it is related, whether we can do that. And then the next is, in the, as a design parameter, uh, when we talk about common source analog amplifier, then we discuss about ICMR or sensitivity and selectivity. Uh, what about those parameters, sir? Mm, in this LNA, actually, um, there is no such, you are biasing that one, and then basically the, your, you are strictly considered with this RF in. And where you have this match box, the LNA, uh, the LNA is preceded with an inductor and capacitors. So, and small resistance that is coming out of the inductor is your resistance only. I am not going to use any additional resistance because additional resistance will cause thermal noise. So, God's sake that try to reduce as much as possible the resistance because your 4 KTR noise will simply erupt your LNA design. So, that is a marked difference from analog design to uh, RF design. So, very much careful about whatever be your performance you want to have. You can say 16 dB gain, you can go to 14 dB gain, do not worry about that. Maybe 20 dB gain, you can go to 16 dB gain, but your noise figure, your noise figure is stand alone there, it will contribute to the overall noise figure of the systems. Additional resistance will cause hell of the problem. It will be extremely difficult for to uh, negate that thermal noise later on. So, that is why avoid using resistance in the network, like you have semi familiar with this common source, come on. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, the structure that I will be showing is this LNA, a common source LNA that is cascoded, and uh, at the input, as, as you can see, there is a matching network over here that is LG over here, then an external CG and an LS over here, and at the output, there is also a matching network in order to complete the design to uh, transfer the power to 50 ohm resistance. Okay. So, at the input, uh, so at the input that you are seeing, <coughs> this is a, this you can consider to be an antenna, yeah. okay. The antenna is having this resistance and this resistance you can consider it to be 50 ohms. Yeah. So, if I go to the properties of this source, you can see that it is applying a resistance of 50 ohms, okay. Uh, other parameters that are present for this uh, antenna are that the AC magnitude that is uh, coming from this antenna, AC magnitude I have considered to be 1 volt. Okay. Uh, then after the antenna, there is a blocking resist blocking capacitance of 20 picofarad value. Okay. This is a metal insulator metal capacitance that is available from our TSMC library. So, we have used that capacitance. So, here is a point that that is true experience that what kind of capacitance to be used? It is, it is the MOS cap or the MIM cap. 
So we are using the MIM cap because MOS cap is extremely process and temperature sensitive. So you go for MIM cap, metal insulator, metal cap. Okay, come on. Yeah. So after that, you can see that there is a biasing circuit. I have given a 0.5 voltage over here. And from the 0.5 voltage over here, there is a resistance, a biasing resistance. The biasing resistance can be considered to be as high as possible, but uh, uh, in view of fabrication, we do not consider it to be greater than 50 kilo ohm or something like that. So I have considered a biasing resistance to be 50 kilo ohm and the biasing voltage to be 0.5 volt. Also, this resistance has to be as high as possible in order to add as much low noise into the uh, input of the LNA. Okay. So after the LNA, after the biasing circuit, then comes the LG and the uh, external CGS and the LS. And these so are remember, the values are 2.0867 nanohenry. So yes. I am within the fabrication limits of that. Okay, 2 to 3 nanohenry is my target. So it is 2.028 nanohenry. What about LS? LS is the uh, LS. We do not need to add it uh, through the layout or through circuit. What we do is that we connect this point, the source of the uh, this uh, input transistor to ground. And when we con con connect it to the ground, then a bond wire gets connected to it and it c communicates with the external circuit. So when a bond wire gets connected to the source of the LNA, source of the uh, input transistor, then we automatically get a 2 nanohenry of inductance value connected to the source of the transistor. So this 2 nanohenry of source uh, inductance will automatically, automatically come when you connect the source impedance, when you connect the source terminal of the LNA to the ground. So when you have the area constraint design, so inductor will actually take 600 micron dia area, right? So if I have two such inductor, then 1200 micron, 1 1.2 millimeter will go. So that's why one inductor is actually the spiral inductors and other inductor which is just for source degeneration is implemented by using simple bond wire. So I said that last class bond wire can be modeled as an inductor. So after that you are seeing that this is the common gate uh, transistor and this common gate transistor is isolating this output resonant network. This output resonant network consisting of LD and CD and the input resonant network. Okay. And uh, it is having another effect. It is uh, increasing again gain by a very little factor because you see the gain at resonant frequency is the parasitic resistance of this inductor times the GM of this transistor. And uh, if we uh, look, it in look into it into in details, then you will see that the output resistance is actually the parasitic resistance of this inductance parallel the resistance that we see uh, downwards. That is the cascode uh, output resistance of the cascoded stage. So the output resistance of the cascoded stage is GM into R naught square, which is much greater than the parasitic resistance of the uh, this inductor. So basically, we, what we get is that the output resistance is the parasitic resistance of this inductor times the GM. We get the gain. And if we use just only one transistor, suppose the transistor here is not present over here, then we will get only R naught over here. Previously, what we got GM into R naught square. Now, if there is no transistor over here, then we will get only R naught. So R0 may be considering the device size that is 140 micro by 250 nano. The output resistance may be comparable to this uh, parasitic resistance, maybe uh, five times or 10 times higher. But if you keep a cascode device, then GM onto R0 square will be much higher than this parasitic resistance. So th that is one more uh, advantage. Then after that, this is the uh, resonant network, output resonant network. Now, the output resistance uh, through simulation I got is about 500 ohms. And uh, this is another matching network in order to transfer the power from the 500 ohms to the 50 ohms. This is another 50 ohm impedance, as you can see. This is another 50 ohm impedance. And maximum power is transferred through this matching network from this 500 ohm output impedance to the 50 ohm input imp 50 ohm uh, output resistance. Okay. This is the calculations for that. Just follow. Uh, so, uh, the parameters that we have considered are uh, gain should be greater than 20 dB, noise figure should be less than 3 dB, and the S11 and S22 parameters that are the input matching and the output matching parameters should be less than minus 20 dB. Now, these values can be found 
from simulation from dc analysis of the transistors you can find out these values so this is using 65 nanometer technology right yes these are uh, all uh, related to 65 nanometer process in 65 nanometer process the oxide thickness of the transistor the gate oxide thickness is 2.6 nanometer the mobility of electron is 243 please note it because this is very important this data that is uh, and the threshold voltage for uh, 250 nanometer length of the transistor is about 0.36 volt now i have considered the power dissipation of the total lna to be 2 milliwatt so and the uh, vdd vdd that you see over here the power supply voltage is 1 volt so the power dissipation divided by the vdd gives the current that is flowing to the lna okay so this will determine our uh, gm and the uh, gate to source voltage of the transistor input transistor okay now the oxide capacitance the oxide capacitance is given by epsilon not epsilon si o2 by t ox epsilon not is the permeability of vacuum epsilon si o2 is the relative permittivity and uh, t ox it is 2.6 nanometer so after calculating it is coming about 13.275 millifarads now using uh, power constraint noise optimized formula we can find out the w of the transistor and the so formula. here is your option power constraint noise optimized design so it is not the minimum noise or the minimum power power is constraint but how you are constraint your power that i will consume only 2 milliwatt of power fine that's all with this what will be the optimum noise this condition boils down to the expression of the transistors with w op Okay, yes. for power optimized design, yes. power constraint design. So uh, the W opt, considering L to be 250 nanometer, mm. is coming about 133 micrometer. So for uh, keeping some uh, extra uh, space in W, we are keeping the W to be about 140 micrometer. Okay, now the GM of the transistor can be found out from this formula root over 2 mu n C ox W opt by L into ID and it is coming about 26.88 milliampere per volt. Now the, for the input matching two conditions are to be satisfied that is RS that is the, the antenna resistance, the antenna resistance this RS, this one is the RS. this antenna resistance should be equal to gm of the input transistor into ls that is the degeneration inductance divided by cgs okay and another more consideration is that uh, the imaginary part of the input impedance that we are seeing should be cancelled out to zero so from that equation we get ls plus lg equal to 1 by omega naught square cgs where lg is the gate inductance that you saw in the figure now gm we know from the previous slide ls also we know that is 2 nanometer uh, 2 nano henry and rs is the 50 ohm resistance so cgs total that we are getting is 1.07 picofarad but the mosfet considering is w to be 140 micrometer and l to be 250 nanometer is cgs cannot be greater than 309 femtofarad using this formula so what we are doing is that we are adding an external cgs to the circuit and that is about 765 femtofarad in order to find in order to match the total cgs to be 1.07 picofarad okay so clear this is called the capacitance compensation you know your intrinsic capacitance is say cgs i mentioned here around 309 femtofarad so additional capacitance should be in parallel which will come into this 1.0752 that will be added in parallel to this come on yes now considering the second equation we know ls we know cgs and we know omega naught omega naught is 2 pi into 2.4 gigahertz that is we are considering 2.4 gigahertz application so we can find out lg to be using this equation to be 2.09 nano henry okay so, so the both the values are 2 to 3 nano henry both lg and ls yes <coughs> now finally we have to consider the gain the gain of the trans tra tra uh, the whole lna is 20 dB and the gain is given by gm of the transistor gm of the input transistor times the parasitic resistance of the inductor and that 20 dB equals 10 now we know gm we know the gain to be 10 so the rp 
the parasitic resistance of the inductor can be 372 ohms. Now, considering the Q of the inductor to be 10, then Rp can be found out to be 3.9 nano Henry and using the formula omega naught square equal to 1 by L d C d that is the this L d and C d they are uh, operating at 2.4 gigahertz. So, omega naught square equal to 1 by L d C d. So, considering that formula you can find out the C d. Now, finally, what is left is the biasing voltage. So, V T H was mentioned in the previous slides, it is about 0.36 millivolt, 0.36 volt for 250 nanometer uh, device length and uh, plus root over 2 I D, I D was 2 milli, 1 milli ampere, mu n C ox was uh, derived from simulation and W and L we already know. So, that V G S was coming at around uh, 0.5 volt. Okay, so, the all the parameters have been found out and lastly what is remaining is the matching network that is at, at the output of the LNA. So, the uh, at the output of the LNA we see a matching network that is like this. So, we convert this series combination of C and R into a parallel combination of C and R. So, by, com by keeping the impedances same that is the series combination of C and R and the parallel combination of C and R keeping both the impedances same we can find out that Q of them become equal and sorry Q becomes equal to root over R p by 50 ohms into 1 minus 1. 50 ohms is the output uh, impedance and R p is the parasitic resistance of the inductor. So, Q is found out to be about uh, I have not shown it in the slide, but it may be if it, it is if you consider it to, it to be 300, then 6 minus 1 that is 5. So, root over 5, 2 point something, 2 point 3 about uh, you are getting the value of Q. Now, LM the parasitic the output matching uh, impedance, the output matching network has a uh, inductance of LM, and we are getting that uh, value of LM to be Q into 50 ohms divided by omega naught, which is about 10.4 nano energy and the CM value is 1 by omega naught square LM into Q square by Q square plus 1 which so is 3 10.4 nano Henry may be 180 nanometer it is not possible, but 65 it is possible. Yes. Okay. So, total on chip LNA in 65 is possible. So, <coughs> these are all the design uh, steps. Okay, so, I will show you the different parameters of the LNA. So, first we do the DC analysis, after doing DC analysis you can find out different parameters like mu n, C ox, C g s. So, you can find out all these parameters through DC analysis. Next we find the gain. So, if we do the DC analysis, uh, sorry the AC analysis you can find out the gain. So, the simulation is running. So, as you can see at 2.4 gigahertz the gain is about 14 dB, 15 dB. 15 dB. So, our target is? But uh, because, uh -huh, but because there is a matching network over here. So, half of the gain, half of the voltage is coming to the passive network. So, actually if we do not consider, if we do not co connect the matching network then the gain will be 6 dB more that is 15 dB plus 6 dB. So, 21 dB, 20 dB gain we are getting. So, I can show you that, but uh, uh, maybe in uh, another time. Then uh, we do the noise figure, noise figure analysis. So, the noise figure, the complete system. So, this is the noise figure of your system about 3.08 uh, 3 dB, no sorry it is coming about 3.77 dB. So, this is the noise figure of the system. So, you understand the your this is the starting whatever design you have made is you start your design and find that 16 or 15 dB is the gain and the noise figure is 3.7. So, you are not at all happy. Now, you actually your journey starts. 
how to tune this W by L, how to tune little bit of inductors, how to tune these capacitors and so on. And then your target to achieve 2 dB and 16 or 20 dB, right? Okay, now the spherometer <coughs> analysis, which will give the S11, S22 and uh, S12, S21 values. Okay. So this gives the input matching. So input matching, you find how much it comes? It is coming about minus, minus 14, 14 dB. dB. Okay. So it's okay. I say that anything less than minus 10 would have been better. This one. Color change kutta vedha kuruli. Yeah. So you find that S11. Hmm. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So that is the S S11, right? The input impedance matching parameters. So how much it's coming at you can say? Minus 20. Minus 14. But you have a deep in here, right? Yeah. That is because of some uh, mismatch in the inductance values. Come on. Uh, okay. Go to uh, the S2. S2 one. parameters, S2 I'll show. So I will see that whether this input impedance matching and output is symmetrical. So remember 14, minus 14. So about 2.4 gigahertz, it is about minus 14 dB. So now I understand that both my input impedance matching and the output impedance matching is symmetric. That's a good design, okay? So both 14 and 14. But 2 to 3 dB difference is allowed. And uh, now the linearity. P1 dB. P1 dB. 1 dB compression. So now we are going to 1 dB compression points. Either reflections, the input reflection and output. What is S2 on? S2 on again. I will S2 show. on, okay. S2 on from? Is S2 on or the? Uh, I have to run one second. So this is about 5 dB because uh, because of the impedance mismatch. At the output, there was an impedance of 300 ohms, uh, about uh, 300 ohms. And uh, at the matching network, at the output of the matching network, here, there is an impedance of 50 ohms. So since power is conserved, so V squared by R over here, it should be equal to V squared by R over here. So the voltage is decreasing. Okay, The ratio V square by R should be equal to the ratio V square by R over here. So here there is more value of R, there is less value of R. So there is more V here, so there is less V over here. Okay. So this is S22, S21. Now the linearity. Improve the S21. 
Decrease the output impedance. Huh? Decrease the uh, inductance of. This is P1 dB. Uh, 1 dB compression. So your linearity. <coughs> How much is coming? It is coming about minus 6 dBm. Minus 6.7 dBm. So our target is minus 10 dBm. Minus 10 dBm. It is above that. So the linearity is fine. Okay. <coughs> okay. But that we conclude with the gain. How to improve the gain? First. Gain. Uh, Why the gain is less? No gain uh, here. Gain here you are getting to be 20 dB okay. and after the matching network it will decrease. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I saw, I saw the output over here at this point. S21 I am, S21 I am seeing from the output to the input. No, with the same matching output matching circuit, the mm. S21 and the AC analysis, the gain is something, I mean the watch difference is there. AC Why analysis, I saw the output over here and in S parameter analysis, the ports that are selected are this port and this port. So it will see the gain from this node up to this node. Okay, so here what is happening is that because of impedance mismatch, because of power transfer but impedance mismatch, the voltage over here will decrease to lower value over here because V square by R and V square by R ratio has to be cons conserved, power has to be conserved. So here there is a higher air, R, so there is a higher V, here there is a lower R, so there should be a lower V over here, lower vol value of voltage will come over here. Okay. And finally the power consumption. And the power consumption you can see it is about 2.19 milliwatt. So okay. our assumption was 2 milliwatt. 2 milliwatt. So okay. the power consumption is found to be 2.11. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So that's how you show that how the first part design looks like when you have only the uh, initial parameters coming from those calculations, and then you using the process, the 65 nanometer and you found that initial design. Now you have to actually found that the output impedance matching is not that good. Therefore, the, the gain is not 16 dB but 5 dB. But if you look at the, the gain at the right after the, uh, the transistor node, it is around 22 dB. So, but the huge loss because of the impedance mismatch. So you have to fine tune your impedance that is S22 parameters so that requires a lot of time actually. That's why I say that it is not so easy. So you have to keep on trying and iterate and make your design perfect. Output of the transient simulations. So just, you want to see the output? Just go and simulate. You want to see the output, whether distortions or something? Just show it. You give us a sinusoidal yes. say 10 millivolt pick to pick or 1 millivolt pick to pick. <coughs> Sir. So this is this transient analysis online. <coughs> yeah. So look at it. You cannot see the lower one, see the color. Yeah. Is it okay? Can you see? The output waveform. <coughs> so, which was his input and output? This one is the input, yeah. first one. Then, second one is the output from the LNA. Yeah. And the third one is the output from the final stage, final 50 ohm resistance. And after the impedance uh, transfer. Uh, after the impedance matching. transfer. So, that one is not. Uh, this is. So, they have different scales, okay? Don't mind They're the amplitude scale. that are the same. So, you have a gain. How much gain you have? Gain, 
8.42 minus 8.6 that is 16 millivolt yeah then output is 1.05 to 9 output is just this must show the gain okay So 113 millivolt. I am getting at the output, and input is 16 millivolt. Okay. So if you consider 100 by 10, that is 10 times gain. So you got 10 times gain at the output of the matching network. Uh, at the output of the LN. Uh, out output of the LN. And at the output of the matching network, output of voltage is 36 millivolt. So two gain of two, 16 to 36 gain of two. So, total value is this. So, how much value you will give it to LG and how much value you will give it to LS depending upon your choice. This is just we have arbitrarily chosen and give you the data. Okay, that's we got it. 